Hello everyone, this is Ranjana and you are watching part 2 of the trick to remember schedules easily. So in the last video we had discussed a story based and a simple trick to remember the sequence of the schedules which are given in the constitution of India. In this video we shall look at each of those schedules and try to understand their meaning and we will also see if there is any trick that can be attached to any of the schedule to memorize them in an easy manner. Now, as discussed already, we have eight, uh, originally we have had eight schedules in the Constitution of India, but at present we have 12 schedules. Also, uh, schedules are part of the Constitution. However, they are physically present as an appendix to the Constitution because Constitution of India is the lengthiest handwritten Constitution and the schedules cover, uh, they are covered in over 100 pages, which is why they, they are present as appendix. So now let us see each of the schedule one by one. Schedule one. So the first schedule is related to the names of the states and their territorial jurisdiction and names of the union territories and their extent. So at present we have 28 states and 8 union territories and we shall look at changes that have happened recently which gives us the present number of 28 states and 8 union territories. Also we have to keep in mind that if there is any change in the number of state of if any new state is added to the list this will happen this change will happen in the first schedule because it clearly deals with the names of the states and union territories. So on 31st October 19, uh, 2019, Article 370 was abolished. So Article 370 had given a special status to the state of Jammu and Kashmir. But by a presidential order on 31st October 2019, the state of Jammu and Kashmir was bifurcated into two parts. And these two parts were then listed as the union territories. One Jammu and Kashmir and the other union territory Ladakh. Also, we can remember that, you know, 31st October is also celebrated as National Unity Day. Why? Because it marks the birth anniversary of Sardar Vallabhai Patel. So these are two pieces of information which are not connected with each other. It's just that we can relate this date with any uh, other event so that we get a holistic uh, learning. Now, next change. On 26th January 2020, two union territories were merged. Which are those uh, union territories? Dadar and Nagar Haveli and Daman and Diu. So after the merger of these two union territories and the bifurcation of Jammu and Kashmir into two separate union territories, we presently have 28 states and 8 union territories. And their names are mentioned in the first schedule of the Indian constitution. So second schedule is provisions relating to the emoluments, allowances, privileges and so on off. So here is the list of that so on off which is quite comprehensive and a long list. So what do we mean by emoluments? These are salaries. So salaries of these given offices and the privileges and allowances are mentioned in the second schedule. And there is a simple trick to remember these offices which is PSC GC. So, so P stands for President of India. So President of India is at the union level. At the state level, we have Governor of States. So we can, we can remember, if we remember President of India, we can also connect it with Governor of States. Now next is S. S stands for Speaker and Deputy Speaker of Lok Sabha. Now, at the union level, we have Lok Sabha. At the state level, we have Legislative Assembly. So, Speaker and Deputy Speaker of Lok Sabha as well as, as Speaker and Deputy Speaker of the Legislative Assembly in states. Next is C. Chairman and Deputy Chairman of the Rajya Sabha. We have Rajya Sabha at the union level and we have Legislative Council at the state level. Hence, we can remember these two as Chairman and Deputy Chairman of the Rajya Sabha, Chairman and Deputy Chairman in the Legislative Council in the states. Now, J stands for judges. At the union level, we have Supreme Court. So, judges of the Supreme Court. At state level, we have High Court. So, judges of the High Court. And C stands for CAC, which is Comptroller and Auditor General. So, in this schedule, 
we see that provisions related relating to the emoluments allowances and privileges of these particular offices are given and how do we remember the list of this particular uh, list of offices psc jc and when we are uh, elongating and elaborating on each of these uh, of these letters we can connect each letter at union state as well as at state level now going on to third schedule third schedule talks about forms of oaths and affirmations so oaths are taken by people who believe in god and affirmations are, are taken by people who are non believers so these oaths and affirmations of some offices not every offices that is there in the union at the uh, state level but nine of these offices for nine of these offices forms of oaths and affirmations are given in the third schedule now how can we remember if we need if if we remember these if we can memorize these uh, these offices then it's fine but if you want to remember them by using a trick then the trick is mcm jc so this jc is the same as discussed in second schedule which is judges of the uh, high court and judges of the uh, supreme court and c stands for cat comptroller and auditor general now mcm is m stands for ministers the union ministers and c stands for candidate for election to the parliament now likewise we will have candidates for election to the state legislature because at union level we have parliament and at state level we have state legislature now next is again m which is for members of the parliament and at state level we'll have members of the state legislature and at union level we have union ministers and at state level we have state ministers so this list can be easily remembered by using this trick of mcm jc m is for ministers union at union level at state level c is for candidates for election to the parliament and to the state legislature m stands for mem members of the parliament and members of the state legislature j stands for judges of the supreme court and judges of the high courts and c stands for comptroller and auditor general now go, moving on to fourth schedule fourth schedule deals with the allocation of seats in the rajya sabha to the states and the union territories now we need to remember that the representation of states in the rajya sabha is done on the basis of population so uh, the state with maximum population in india will have maximum representation in the rajya sabha this system is uh, in contrast or is different from the system that is followed in the parliament of the united states of america wherein rajya sabha their rajya sabha is called senate and each senate has two members from each of the state but in india rajya sabha has uh, members uh, in the uh, member in its house which is proportional to the population of each of the state now fifth schedule deals with provisions relating to the administration and control of scheduled areas and scheduled tribes so in india except for four states and we'll see what those four states are so except for those four four states every other scheduled area and scheduled tribe present in any other state their provisions uh, relating to the administration are given in the fifth schedule and why is this done to preserve the heritage culture culture and tradition of these tribes now as mentioned there are four states which are not included in this schedule and which are those states <clears throat> so if we if we remember by the trick that we had discussed in the previous video atm make so this is assam tripura mizoram and meghalaya provisions relating to the administration of tribal areas in the states of assam meghalaya tripura and mizoram are given in the sixth schedule why has this happened why do we not have uh, the provisions relating to these states in the fifth schedule because these tribal areas in these states they have very distinctive culture and to give them a special status or to bifurcate them for other for from the rest of the tribal areas they have been included in the sixth schedule now going on to seventh schedule seventh schedule deals with division of powers between union and the states in terms of list so we have three lists union list state list and concurrent list so union list will have those subjects on which laws can be made by the parliament that is the union 
by by the government at union level and at state uh, and the state list will contain laws which can be made at the state level and concurrent list will contain those uh, subjects on which the laws can be made by both union and the states however the overall shift will be tilted towards the union in case of concurrent list so this is a very com these are very comprehensive lists but just to give you an idea the union list will have issues of national importance for example defense of india foreign affairs railways and foreign loans and state list will have uh, those subjects which are concerned with the with those states locally for example police fisheries industries and agriculture it is very important to note that agriculture is a subject mentioned in the state list and not in the union list and concurrent list has subjects like electricity factories drugs and poisons so so this is not the complete list the complete list can be found in any book that uh, any book on indian polity now moving on to eighth schedule uh, we have at present 22 languages recognized by the constitution and the list of these 22 languages is given in the 8th schedule so this is that list and originally there were 14 languages and later on some languages were added and the trick to remember those languages is that through 21st amendment act sindhi was added and through 71st amendment act konkani manipuri and nepali were added and through 92nd amendment act bodo uh, maithili santhali and dogri were added so the trick to remember them is 21st amendment act plus 71st amendment act give, gives 92 and s kmn bodo masi so bodo is bodo dongri maithili and santhali kmn konkani manipuri nepali and s is sindhi so originally we had this much schedules in our constitution eight schedules now the re remaining four schedules have been added by the constitutional amendment act because they were added by constitutional amendment act we can clearly say that schedules are very much part of the constitution of india now let's have a look at the ninth schedule so ninth schedule was added by the very first constitutional act in 1951 and this was done to introduce certain land reforms for the abolition of zamindari system this was done uh, in order to uh, to to kind of uh, remove and help the farmers uh, the burden of the zamindari system that was given on them now moving on to 10th schedule it has provisions relating to the disqualification of the members of parliament and state legislatures on the ground of defection for example if there is uh, a member in the parliament from a particular party and after winning the election they get a seat and then they move on to some other party then they their seat can be disqualified on the basis of defection now this was added by 52nd amendment act of 1985 next schedule is 11th schedule which deals with the powers authority and responsibility of panchayats which are local self governments at uh, village level and it has 29 matters so, and there is also a trick that i will uh, share in the upcoming videos on how we can remember these 29 matters now last schedule deals with powers authority and responsibilities of the municipalities which are local governing bodies in the urban areas and this was added by the 74th amendment act of 1992 so i hope that uh, some of uh, the information and uh, the facts and provisions given in these schedules have been clear uh, through this video and in the next videos i will make a, uh, may make a story based or a trick based uh, lesson on how we can remember parts of the constitution so if you like this video or if you want to share any comment or suggestion please uh, write it below in the comment section and i look forward to seeing you in our next sessions thank you so much